Uncommon Marketing Matters is an interview series hosted through Uncommon Marketing Works that highlights the accomplishments and learn from failures of experts in the marketing world and how they achieve success through unique and creative tactics. Many marketers face that myth that anyone can do marketing, and I'm putting heavy quotes around anyone can do marketing. However, results-driven marketing is more complex than some may think. Uncommon Marketing Matters highlights these complexities and gives an inside look into what it takes to be an effective, successful, and innovative marketer. Hello, I'm Amber DeFabio, the Growth Marketing Manager here at Uncommon Marketing Works. Let's dive into Uncommon Marketing Matters. Today we are here with CEO and founder Stacey Cretu. She owns the marketing agency Uncommon Marketing Works, and we're extremely excited to have her on. Hi, Stacey, and welcome to Uncommon Marketing Matters. We are rolling with it. <laughs> yeah, right into it. Here we go. So Stacey, can you start off just by letting us know, how did you get started in marketing in the first place? Uh, yeah, I got started... Um... I was uh, going to school for my undergrad, um, ironically starting out in accounting, um, lasted one semester in accounting and realized how much I was not a math person. Um, and um, I transitioned to a uh, just a business ad administration um, position and of which we were able to choose some prerequisites. Um, and I, I chose marketing and management as my, uh, as my emphasis within business administration. Um, during that time, I worked full time. Uh, I worked for a real estate company as a receptionist, but as the receptionist, I was responsible for, um, for doing all the advertising uh, for all of the realtors. So um, I had to write the ads, I had to put them all together. And at, back then I had to lay it out um, and send it to the, uh, our ad to the newspaper to publish the, um, the, home, the homes that were available in the newspaper, uh, as well as writing all the information uh, on the properties and uploading it to the uh, MLS system. Um, so during my, my, uh, when I was working and going to school, um, I was able to, um, get more into the marketing and advertising aspect, um, while also purchasing advertising for the agents or for the real estate company. Um, and then luckily right out of school, um, I was able to get a, um, full-time position for a agency. Uh, we focused on building materials and construction, and I was the account coordinator um, and was able to um, work um, within um, direct, with direct client accounts. Um, and back then, um, we were primarily doing branding and print, um, as well as media. Um, and at, at that point, websites were just starting to become a thing. Do you you kind of graduated and then post-collegiate career, you knew right away that you went into be in marketing and wanted to continue in this field. Oh yeah. I mean, primarily because of the experience I had while uh, in college, um, I uh, actually worked for two real estate companies um, at one point during college. And, um, you know, I obviously took a lot of marketing, sales management, um, and back, you know, classes. And during that time, fell in love with, you know, the whole marketing aspect of it. Um, so I uh, applied for an agency position um, with the understanding that I would be getting a lot of experience working for an agency. Uh, right out of college. And the agency was really what I would say prompted me to really like um, the marketing field. I think for a lot of people who know you as a marketer, they know that you're extremely passionate about marketing and that this is kind of like your baby. You love it. Um, but what about marketing specifically do you find that you have the most passion for? Um, the strategy side, probably building out a foundation, looking at, 
um, you know, uh, looking at how the sales and marketing efforts are really affected by the tactical side of marketing. So, um, you know, one thing that um, I, I enjoy, you know, having clients that that look for full service is the fact that we can really, um, you know, we can really have an understanding from um, a business perspective, what marketing is doing to help the bottom line um, and being able to provide uh, strategic direction on how marketing and sales are greatly affected and how they should be, um, you know, intertwined together, um, as well as making sure that everything we're doing from a marketing perspective is um, integrated um, and making sure that if we're running an email campaign, how it's affecting website statistics, or if we're running, you know, Google ads, how it's affecting website statistics, how's it affecting the bottom line, how's it affecting lead generation, and then translating that information of what marketing's doing to what sales is doing and how marketing can then also help sales. So I think one thing that, um, you know, a lot of people struggle with both internal marketers and other agencies is being able to have that understanding of the connection between marketing and sales and the importance of making sure that both of them are, are connected and working together as one engine versus separate, you know, um, separate engines, if you will, for a company. Yeah. So you've gone from, you know, insurance to building construction. Um, I know that you worked uh, for the military for a little bit. You've kind of been around the block. I know you particularly like software companies as well. Um, so you've worked with a lot of different people. You've worked in a lot of different industries and fields. As you're working with these people, are there any specific marketing stereotypes that you've come across? I know some big ones when we're talking to other marketers are this, this concept of that just about anyone can do marketing. And have you come across any of those stereotypes and how do you handle those professionally? Your face right now. <laughs> yeah, so marketing stereotypes, that's funny. Um, I, yeah, I mean, we come, I, I've, I come across a lot, um, you know, a, all marketers are created equal as one, you know, uh, you can have somebody that is right out of school and decides that they want to freelance and wants to freelance in, I don't know, social media, for example. Um, yet, you know, you have a agency um, that have people that specialize in that particular field, what, whatever it might be. Um, and, you know, they're the, you know, companies looking at the agency and looking at the person that is just right out of school and doing content for social and, and saying that, you know, that anybody can do it. No, no, not anybody can do marketing. Um, so it, it's, it's a learned, um, it's a learned skill and it's a learned, um, application and, you know, not everybody, um, not everybody understands that, um, you know, and I think it's a matter of looking at, you know, the qualifications and it's not all about, um, you know, the cheaper price. Um, if you're looking for to hire somebody, whether it's internal or external, it's about the qualifications of a, the person or, or the team or what the experience of that, that, um, person or team bring to the table. Um, you know, it, it, it also, you know, another stereotype, which, um, I find kind of funny is that, you know, a lot of people will, will come and say, I need you to guarantee us 10 leads a month for the next three months through Google, we'll just say Google PPC. And there's no way that any marketer can, can say, I, yes, we can guarantee X amount of leads, you know, every month for the next, you know, 10 months, because it's, what's all based on, um, what the, um, you know, what the users are, are doing, what the, what the market is, you know, if the market's fluctuating, um, you know, it's about uh, making sure really honestly that, you know, you have a plan in place and you're monitoring that plan and you're, and you're optimizing that plan um, to ensure that you do, you, and you are able to meet certain goals. Um, but, you know, the, the stereotype of, you know, being able to say, yeah, we can guarantee X number of leads or X number of contacts or phone calls or what have you, um, we, can, we can estimate 
no problem. But to guarantee something is, um, you know, something that um, I have not met one person that was able to guarantee a particular uh, outcome um, other than estimating out based on certain criteria of um, the tactical elements. Because when it comes to market marketing, everything is an experiment. And because one thing works for one company, that doesn't mean it's gonna work for another company. And they could have very similar buyer personas, markets, everything, but that does not mean it's gonna, the same thing is going to work. So while one thing might work for one company and another might work for another, you're in that experimental phase, but it seems like overall uncommon marketing works kind of has that, that formula down in that equation to figure out what works for one company versus another. Um, and in saying that, I kind of wanted to roll back a couple of years from when you first decided I'm going to start my own marketing agency to where it is now. So can you talk a little bit about why you wanted to open your own agency, what that process has looked like for you and what you really attribute the success of your agency to at this point in time? Oh, uh, yeah. So I started my agency in 2016 with the premise of it was just going to be myself um, and I was going to freelance for several clients. Uh, which happened. Um, and when I, you know, needed specialized services such as website design or what have you, I had key contractors that I had worked with over the years um, of being, you know, internally uh, with companies. Um, and that was really my goal. Um, I didn't have this grandiose uh, goal of having, you know, a, a huge company. Um, and then uh, back in 2019, um, 2020, early 2020, I brought on uh, a contractor full time um, to help out with content because we had a lot of content needs um, that I was not able to keep up with. Um, so um, I brought her on full time. And then ironically, just right after that, I needed somebody we needed more graphic design and I could only handle so much of that. So um, we had, you know, two full-time contractors at that point specializing in, in two unique areas um, where I was focused on a lot of doing strategy and marketing automation. And then um, COVID hit. And um, in one day I lost most of the clients uh, and like many other agencies and um, the, I had to lay off, um, or I had to like, I had to reduce hours for one of the contractors. Um, and um, like most things in my life, I don't. Uh, well, I socked for a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, maybe for like a couple weeks actually. And then I kicked myself in the ass. Um, like, hopefully, you know, for a lot of people did and said this isn't going to happen to me. And so I invest, invested back in the business. Um, I put my my salary, I was pay, still paying two people that were working. I put my salary back into the business and started a um, very aggressive LinkedIn outreach campaign. And from there, um, you know, within six months of when, what, March of last year, I got most of the clients back, um, then some. And by the end, um, by what are end of 2020, I had, um, you know, had hired five, six people full time as full time employees, um, double, tripled the income, and now, you know, going and looking at today, um, you know, quadrupled revenue, and we have ten employees. So, um, I think it's just a matter of the fact that I wasn't going to let, like I, like I do in life, I wasn't going to let something defeat me. So, um, so now I am running an agency with a 10 people plus several contractors. And, uh, again, not what I set out to do, uh, back in 2016, but here we are. And, um, the success of the company is, 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 based on the is based on the individuals that work um, for the company 
um, not not necessarily me. Um, I had help in in my efforts to build the company, and now you know, with all the clients that we have, it's it's the help of the individuals within the company, um, not necessarily just me. So, so how how long have you been in the marketing industry? How long have you been working in marketing? If you count the four years of my undergrad working full-time and doing advertising, uh, 22 years after graduation, um, or it would be 18 years. Okay. Okay. So that 18, 22 years, um, you've obviously learned a lot of lessons. And if you could go back to um, undergrad Stacy or postgraduate Stacy, is there any advice that you would give to yourself at that point in time that new graduates coming out into marketing, into the marketing industry could also benefit from? Uh, I mean, my biggest learning experience graduating is, was working for an agency. That was my, that was the largest, um, that was the most experience I got. Um, and it's what prompted me to, you know, then go into working internally for, uh, organizations. Um, you know, my, I went back for my master's degree and it was, um, it was a wonderful opportunity. And, uh, I learned, uh, even more, um, than I, than, I mean, it was kind of a, um, it was an applied learning um, experience, so that was great. Um, but I would say, um, in any case, for anyone graduating in any degree, go get some real, real world knowledge um, before going and getting a master's degree or continuing on to another um, specialty, another um, like a master's, another um, master's degree or what have you. Um, but you know, I jumped around from industry to industry, um, but still remained focused on marketing. And um, I would say that um, it gave me a lot of experience because um, instead of staying in one industry my entire career, I was able to apply what I've learned in one to another, et cetera, and learn um, how different, you know, personas, different industries, uh, work as far as, um, you know, operations is concerned, as far as marketing is concerned. So I would say, you know, get the most experience that you can. Um, and from a, from a marketing perspective, agencies can be rough, um, uh, and, and exhausting, but it was the biggest, um, it was the most influential, um, you know, job right out of college that I, I could have, um, had. In, in wrapping this up in our, in our last question here, um, you know, I was, I was going to ask you what's one of the biggest challenges you faced with your agency, but I mean, you've had to go through COVID. I mean, you had to pretty much close your business for a little bit, um, rally and build it all back up again. So the dreaded interview question that I'm going to ask that I feel like everyone asks during an interview, um, from a professional standpoint, if you could look at the trajectory of the next five years, like where would you like to see yourself, your agency, your, your, yourself in a professional role in five years from now? Um, I mean, I think I'm there, right. From a professional role perspective, I don't, um, I mean, I'm, I own, you know, a business, um, right now it's a, it's a thriving business and I could only ask that in five years of the same, um, uh, from a, from a, um, uh, you know, thriving, it's not thriving in five. I don't want it to not be thriving in five years. Um, so, um, you know, I think that it's, um, you know, I don't really, sh I, I, I don't stress out about what's five years from now. Um, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's day by day, it's uh, week by week. And, um, you know, it, it'll, it'll be what it'll be, I guess. Um, but my, my goal um, is to hopefully have, you know, still have an agency and it still be thriving and have, you know, great people working for me and have really fun, great clients to work with. 
um, you know, whatever that equates to in revenue is, it is what it is. Um, I'm not um, one to get stuck on, on that. As long as I can pay my employees and have a net, a net, a good net revenue, I'm, I'm, uh, and we can do good job, a good job for our clients. That's all I really care about. I think as marketers, we can all benefit um, from advice and the stories of other marketers, regardless if they're a manager, a director, a VP, president, an agency yeah. owner, whatever it should be. Um, so wanted to thank you so much for your time today, Stacey, and for being a part of um, Uncommon Marketing Matters. It's always really special uh, to bring marketers together and, and collaborate and hear about their experiences. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our podcast, Uncommon Marketing Matters. We will be releasing a new podcast every month with a new marketing expert. And should you ever find yourself in need of some advice when it comes to your marketing tactics, Uncommon Marketing Works is here. Go ahead, give us a shout, contact us today.